Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone and welcome back to our podcast. And in this podcast, inshallah we will discuss about uh, something that is close enough from now time. So we're going to discuss about study abroad or work abroad. abroad. And yeah, we're going to discuss about which country we choose and which instance we choose and what do we want to do there and what is our goal and what is our preparation. So without further ado, before we start this podcast, let's start it with Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And of course, with introduction, firstly, my name is Fadil Baikal Aftah and I am from uh, from the 11th grade of software engineer. And me, my name is Mohamed Fatir and I'm, I'm also from 11th RPL. Okay, so enough of the introduction everyone. Uh, maybe let's just go into the topic, let's just dive right in. So about this study abroad, for me, uh, originally I want to work abroad yes, because, of course. because my goal was I go to this vocational high school and with the mindset of I want to work, work. just fast, I want to just, just work, but sadly that's not how this world works, so yes. you have to use certificates and for that you have to study and go to college, to go to university, and that's why I changed my goal to study abroad. And uh, the country that I choose, uh, it is China, why you ask, because you know chi- China is mainly the leader in technology in nowadays. You don't ask, like, if, you, if you're talking about China, then the technology of course is, it's, is mad, <laughs> because they are smart people and they are, the intelligence of their people is high, it's, it's so high. So that's why I chose China, not just because of that, but because there is a scholarship to go there. And what makes me more interest, and that is in China, the Muslim population is growing and the growth is not slow. It's, it's quite fast, if I can say. So yeah, China probably is my main option for now. If there is later, if later there is any alternative option, I would gladly take it in, probably. So, my choice is to go to the college first before I start to work because the world works with the certificates. Yes. <laughs> so we need to we need to get the certificate before we go uh, into the company or instance. So I want to study abroad in uh, Medina in Islamic country uh, Islamic University of uh, Medina or we can say it's UIM in Indonesia. So the reason why I choose uh, UIM because I want to uh, live or study in uh, with Islamic environment. So it's not just about uh, the world, but it's about the akhirat too. So I want to uh, study, but uh, I want to, what is it? To increase my worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Medina is the the favorite place of uh, Nabi Ma- Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so I choose Medina for study abroad uh, I want to live or study with the Islamic environment of course to increase uh, my worship to Allah because we will uh, We will, we will face Allah, so we need to have preparation before we uh, face Allah <laughs> So that's Allah. my reason to choose uh, Madinah or UIM for study. Mm. Alright guys, we have talked about which country in which instance that we want to go in. But when we go in, what is actually, the question is, what do we choose there? What is the major to choose there? And for this question, I will let Fatir to 
go first. Fatir, what do you want to choose? Like the major? For the major, of course, uh, still uh, about technology, technology or computer science because uh, if you want to join, if you want to go to UIM uh, and you choose Islamic major, you need more preparation about your Islamic. Yeah, and, and mean, Arabic and Arabic. And Arabic, of course. <laughs> but if we choose uh, technology or computer science, uh, I think English is enough. Engli yeah, English is enough. So my choice is computer science oh. because my vocational high school is about technology. About technology. Uh, so it it makes sense actually. What about you? Oh, for me, of course. It's this. I think it's almost the same, but we we just different place. So, in China, uh, there's this like focus, uh, focus program, on mainly on technology, and that is, and it is, it is. I think it's for mainly for software engineer. Yes. So it's for developing AI, yeah. but uh, unfortunately, uh, my passion is not in AI, but my passion is in Android. So I'm searching for the major that is uh, aligned mm -hmm. with my current passion yes because you know when you when you are studying when you are doing something uh, your passion will affect greatly on your work on your study if you don't have passion in it you're you're most oh, likely yeah. to just like lazy just playing around but the other side if you have passion then you will do anything I mean you will work greatly to it's achieve. like a hobby right? Yeah, it's like a hobby. So yeah, you can say my hobby now is like playing with Android, uh, what Android software, and uh, I've been doing Jetpack Compose for this uh, for this time. So yeah, probably I will choose the major that is most aligned with my vocational, with my major right now, with my passion, and with my hobby. But. There is no different answer to my major. What is my major is because uh, what is it? You know, a lot of major they're like comp comp uh, what is it? Uh, computer science, and then there's like uh, IT infrastructure, which mainly uh, I think it's about networking. So it's it's not that aligned with my current self. So worst worst case scenario. I would probably uh, like to, I would choose a major that is just uh, slightly aligned with my passion, but then I will do the rest like uh, self-learn, self-taught, doing courses maybe, or maybe uh, taking, taking what? Taking exam and you know, on those open website, for example, decoding Udemy and Coursera, and then code pollution, all you, you name it. There's a lot of thing. There's a lot of uh, what is it? Lo a lot of place that you can get your certificate from, and it will it will it will impact greatly on your CV, on your what is it? On your portfolio, and which will make you more likely to be accepted in a company. So yeah, and in the meantime, probably I will search for a work before going to college because I want to feel I want to what taste how is the world of, uh, what is it the world of company no not the world of company the world of production company and to work in one and to field myself how does this company work and how does it actually uh, impact with my so yeah, there's not there's no different answer to my major, so probably I will think it later on. <laughs> yeah. So what is your preparation to go to China? Oh, we need to prepare ourselves to go yeah, abroad. Yeah, right? you're right. So preparation for me myself. Uh, I will. I will. Uh, I haven't learned any Mandarin, so that is a no-no. That is, uh, <laughs> haven't checklist that. But 
In the meantime, I have English, and that is the international language. Yes. Which most likely to be accepted there, maybe, but of course, in China, the people in China is the same as like people in Japan. They don't like using English, other language like English. They, they want to use native, their native language, which is so complicated. You know, Mandarin language, they have like the most, uh, like the most amount of vocabulary and those alphabets and by by the time now it's uh it's still increasing you know P I have a friend who learned mandarin and he learned like for four years but still i mean he can't he can't speak fluently but he knows the theory but he, does, he doesn't know how to speak because yeah I mean, maybe it's because it's lack of practice. Who knows? Who speak Mandarin in this in this country? No. <laughs> like, so yeah, sadly, uh, he can't he can't speak, but not fluent like like we speak English right now. Or we speak to people. Maybe if he if he were to speak to native people in China, it would probably like uh, what is it? Yeah, probably can't speak very well. So yeah. About preparation, I think I will probably focus <coughs> mainly on English because Mandarin is just too difficult to learn. But on the bright side, you know, I have my passion in IT, so I'll find a way out about my preparation. Oh yeah, and speaking about preparation, probably uh, when you go to other, other country, Learning about their culture is probably the most important thing that you yes. can do. Like, for instance, uh, our culture in Indonesia and their culture in China is probably it's it's not the same. You can say so. Uh, for instance, people in China, when they are being served food, uh, when when you like, what is it? emptied the food you eat it all it is a way to show a disrespect to the who the one who serve it why because mm. uh, they 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 view it as like this person doesn't satisfy with what we're serving so yeah if you all want to be polite in china probably w would like to you probably want to what uh, give a little, what is it? You know, uh, how you say it? I forgot. So just don't eat it all. Don't eat it all. Don't don't eat the food at all. So yeah, learning about culture. I've learned about culture in China. I've learned culture about China, but not to the point when I uh, like I know it all. So yeah, I've learned. Some, I learned some, from, from some video, from some blogger, they go to China, they meet, they meet Chinese people and they learn how to talk to them, how to interact with Chinese people and yeah, the etik, a lot of other stuff. And probably that is probably the most, it's, a, it's preparation that is close to what I want to achieve right now. Um, what about you? So, uh in Medina, we they are using Arabic. Yeah. <laughs> so I will choose my uh, computer science major, but uh, I live in Arabic country. Country. So I think I need to learn about the Arabic too because <laughs> they will speak with Arabic, not English, <laughs> in the environment or in their life. So. <laughs> I need to learn about the Arabic, so how I learn about uh, Arabic language. So I'm trying to uh, join the program. But the Arabic is not that bad though, compared to China. Because, yes. Because you know, uh, if, if, uh, like, if you consider it reading Quran, speaking Arabic, you speak Arabic yes. every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Yeah. It will be easier. Uh, yeah. I think you have almost the basics like you know in in arabic they have makroj mm. if if it's not right then you're not speaking correctly 
So yeah, pretty, it's pretty easy to learn Arabic, I think, because yes. we are Muslim, and Arabic is a probably one of the easiest. I mean, the learning curve, the learning curve of Arabic is quite deep, but if you want to speak Arabic, it's quite easy because you just have to speak more, 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 more. Not like Mandarin. Yes. Because Mandarin have those all sort of, what is it, pronunciation that is very difficult the to demonstrate. Yeah. And the alphabet is so weird that <laughs> if the intonation is not correct, then it's, it's not correct. For, for instance, if you speak like ma, it means your mom. But if you speak like ma, it means horse. So. <laughs> That that is uh, a little bit of Mandarin for me. Yeah, that's learning Arabic is so difficult, but it's not going to stop me from achieving my dream, inshallah, achieving goals. Because if you don't have a dream, what do you want to do in this world? So yeah, I think that is our, our preparation. So so the the conclusion is probably if you want to go outside like abroad. You gotta prepare extra because you are not in your own country. Yes, of course. And you have to adapt. Uh, your adaptability, you have to increase that because you will be meeting a whole new environment. And if you think that blending in is easy, it's not. It's difficult. You have to adapt to new language, adapt to new culture, new. adapt to maybe new foods. Maybe if there's no Indonesian restaurant there, you have to adapt with new foods. But probably, probably eating good foods. So if you want to study or work abroad, you need to, yeah, extra preparation because you are not in your comfort zone. So yeah. prefer, pre start prepare from now until you get your uh, your goals. So. It's my last statement. I think, I think we can wrap it up here. Yes. Yeah. So I think that is all guys from for this podcast. Thank you for listening and watching. And we will see you in the next podcast. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.